Let's talk about phylogenetic trees. So let's start out by defining it. Phylogenetic trees illustrate evolutionary relationships between different organisms. But keep in mind that these are hypotheses. They are not facts. So we can do our best to illustrate relatedness among groups of species and different organisms, but we can't be 100% sure that our model is correct. Let's look at some key aspects of reading phylogenetic trees. This is called a root. The root is the oldest common ancestor of all the species in the phylogenetic tree. The places where I'm drawing these green dots are called nodes. And nodes are where species branch off from a common ancestor. So it illustrates divergence from a common ancestor. For example, this branch split apart at this node into two different groups of species. Likewise, this common ancestor diverged into these descendant species. In the same way, at this node, we see that the branch splits into species B and species A. At this node, the branch splits into species C and species D. So we can say that speciation occurs at the point where the node is located because that is where the most recent common ancestor diverges into two descendant species. Another key idea is that closeness between two species is determined by how recently they share a common ancestor. So organisms that are more closely related share a more recent common ancestor than either of those share with any other groups. Now remember that these nodes or green dots on this phylogenetic tree show us the common ancestors. By reading this tree, we can see that species A shares a more recent common ancestor with species B than either of them share with any other organisms on this tree. Therefore, we can hypothesize that species A and species B are more closely related to each other than either of them are to species C, D, or E. What about species E? Who is species E most closely related to on this phylogenetic tree? Well, if we follow its branch, we will find that species E's most recent common ancestor is this green node right here. And this green node, which represents a common ancestor, also diverged into all these species over here. Therefore, species E shares a recent common ancestor with A, B, C, and D. So E is equally related to all four of those species. Another way to think about it is that species A, B, C, and D are more closely related to each other than they are to E because they share this recent common ancestor. But if we go farther back, we will find that they all share this node with E. So this common ancestor is shared with E, and therefore A, B, C, and D are equally related to E. Let's take a look at group C. C goes back to this node over here. And this common ancestor is shared with species D. Therefore, C and D are more closely related to each other than they are to any other group, because that common ancestor that they share 
is not shared by any other species on this tree. So let's review some key vocabulary. Sister taxa. What are sister taxa? Sister taxa are groups that are more closely related to each other than either is to any other group on the phylogenetic tree. So for example, A is more closely related to B, so A and B are sister taxa because they share a more recent common ancestor than either does to any other group on the tree. In fact, look at A and C. Their most recent common ancestor goes farther back. Same with A and D. Their most recent common ancestor is here. B and C have a recent common ancestor that's there as well. B and D also share that, most, that recent common ancestor. B and E's recent common ancestor goes even farther back. So A and B are more closely related to each other because they share a more recent common ancestor than A did with C, D, or E, and than B shared with C, D, or E. In the same way, C and D are sister taxa because their more recent common ancestor is here. And that common ancestor is not shared by any other group on the tree. So therefore we can conclude that A and B are sister taxa and C and D are sister taxa. So which group is E sister taxa to? Well, if we follow its branch and go back to its common ancestor, we'll see that this common ancestor also diverged into the species A, B, C, and D. Therefore, this entire group is sister taxa to E. So E is sister taxa to A, B, C, and D together. Another way that we can classify groups is by determining if they're monophyletic, paraphyletic, or polyphyletic. But what do these words mean? Monophyletic is a group that includes the common ancestor and all of that common ancestor's descendants. So for example, take a look at this node over here. This node branches into C and D. And remember that nodes represent a common ancestor. That common ancestor's descendants are C and D only. Therefore, this is a monophyletic group. Let's take a look at this node over here. This common ancestor diverged into species A and species B. Because A and B share a common ancestor that's not shared with any other group, this is a monophyletic group. What about this node here? This node diverges into the species A and species B, but it also diverges into species C and species D. So all descendants of this common ancestor are A, B, C, and D. Therefore, this entire thing is a monophyletic group. So now I want you to think about, is this a monophyletic group? Well, the first thing you should notice is that this node over here, which represents a common ancestor, actually branches into this group of species as well. Therefore, E itself is not a monophyletic group, but this entire group of species is a monophyletic group. 
A, B, C, D, and E are all descendants of that common ancestor. One way to quickly count all the monophyletic groups in a phylogenetic tree are just counting the number of nodes there are. In this tree, there are four nodes. Therefore, there are four monophyletic groups because there are four groups that branch from one common ancestor. What about paraphyletic groups? Paraphyletic groups are groups that include some, but not all, of the descendants of a common ancestor. So for example, taking a look at this node, it branches into A. Species A and that common ancestor would be a paraphyletic group because it does not include species B, which is also a descendant of that common ancestor. Similarly, this node splits into species A, B, C, and D. But if we chose to only group species A and B and exclude C and D, then this would be a paraphyletic group because we are not including C and D, which are also descendants of this common ancestor. And finally, polyphyletic groups. Polyphyletic groups are when members that don't share a recent common ancestor are grouped together. So for example, let's look at A and D. A's most recent common ancestor is here, and D's most recent common ancestor is here. But if we were to group A and D together, then that would be a polyphyletic group because they don't share a recent common ancestor. They do share a common ancestor, but not a recent one. Another example is B and C. B has a recent common ancestor that it shares with A, and C has a recent common ancestor that it shares with D. But B and C are polyphyletic because they don't share a recent common ancestor. Let's now look at parsimony. Parsimony means that the most likely phylogenetic tree or the best hypothesis is the one that is the simplest. And the simplest means the one that has the least evolutionary events. So let's take a look at two examples. Here, I've drawn two phylogenetic trees, and I'm just going to fill in some traits or synapomorphies on both of these phylogenetic trees. Let's now determine which is the simplest phylogenetic tree. The tree on the left has one, two, three, four, five, six characters or evolutionary events. But the one on the right has one, two, three, four, five. But why is this true? Well, if we look at the tree on the left, we see that the trait of hair evolved twice. It's present in species B, but also in C and D. Whereas in the tree on the right, it evolved once in the common ancestor and then was present in all descendants. Because the tree on the right has the least number of evolutionary events, we are going to say that that tree is the most parsimonious or the most likely hypothesis or model of evolutionary relatedness. There's one final key idea we're going to talk about, which is homologous characters versus analogous characters. So what do these words mean? Well, homologous characters are those that are present in the common ancestor. 
and are then present in descendants of that common ancestor. But analogous characters are those that develop independently in different species due to similar environmental pressures. So for example, in the phylogenetic tree on the right, the trait of hair is represented as a homologous character because it is suggested that the common ancestor had that trait and it was then passed to all descendants of that common ancestor. Therefore, the reason that B, C, and D share the character of hair is because they all descended from a common ancestor that had that trait. On the other hand, the phylogenetic tree on the left suggests that hair is an analogous character because it is not present in the common ancestor of B, C, and D. Clearly here, the common ancestor did not have that trait of hair. Hair evolved later independently in those species because of possibly environmental pressures. Analogous characters evolve by convergent evolution and convergent evolution is that idea that's two different species that are located in different parts of the world or in different environments can develop similar traits because of selected pressures in nature. I hope this video helped, and if it did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.